Welcome to the Bassmaster Studios, and today we're going to talk to an Elite Series rookie, a first-year pro on the Bassmaster Elite Series, Destin DeMarion, from a state that we don't have a bunch of pros in, Pennsylvania, that region, uh, you get to add to our Northeast, um, I guess, ringer, to your Northeast ringer with all the other guys up there, so how are you, Destin? <laughs> Doing well, Ronnie, yeah, thanks for having me. A um, little bit interesting year so far, but it's, uh, it's been fun. 2020 has been interesting, and that's uh, that's a good way to put it. And we're gonna, I, I, we might as well just address the uh, the elephant in the room. We're two Elite Series events into the regular season, and it's mid July. That's kind of a really weird thing. Normally, we're we're winding down. We only have two or three left, but we've got two under our belts. So this is going to be a really fun kind of, uh, I guess, experiment. A lot of summer and a couple fall events. Something that we really haven't had on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. You know, I'm. Um kind of excited for the the fall aspect since we really haven't had it i think a lot of those tournaments are going to be challenging but um those kind of tough tournaments it's really anybody's game and you know getting five bites is is really important and everybody counts i mean you could do well getting three or four bites some of those tournaments i think well, I think that some people would want to put an asterisk on this year for whoever wins Angler of the Year or something. But I, in my opinion, I think this is going to be one of the best years yet, uh, trying to get the full schedule in. But when we do, whoever wins the Angler of the Year is going to be proven, tested, tough competitions, adjusting to the schedule that's changing. A lot of anglers like to have the plans uh, in concrete and then roll with them from February on. But with as much change as we've seen, whoever does adjust and wins this Angler of the Year or even wins specific events would have really earned it for 2020. Yeah, I totally agree. You know, I'm one, I've kind of fallen into the uh, category of a planner. I like to really plan out well ahead of time what I'm going to do and, you know, go pre-fish and really get a lay of the land on a lot of places. Um, so it is going to be really interesting. It's really a test of being able to adjust on the fly this year. And um, it is going to test us all in a different time of year where, you know, a lot of guys haven't fished a lot of tournaments. And it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to hopefully finish out this year without any more uh, hiccups. So you're a rookie and you're from up north in that, in that region up there. And yet you started the first Elite Series event of your career basically as a local because everyone's like, why are people picking Destin to marry? And he's from up north. Why were they picking a rookie? You spend a lot of time at the St. John's River. So for you, had you ever seen the St. John's River act the way it did those three days for our event? No, I, and I really think um, that local advantage was somewhat taken away. Um, you know, the eelgrass had been taken out of the river, which had changed up a lot of things. But, you know, for for the local advantage that time of year, it, it just became anybody's ball game. Um, you know, knowing a lot of the areas where the fish spawn is really key in, in the events down there when you're, you got that advantage, that local thing, but it really didn't play that much. And things just kind of, uh, it was kind of a crap shoot and, you know, guys really figured out some things and, and adjusted well and kudos to the guys that really ended up catching them, you know, pretty good. Uh, the weights weren't good overall, obviously, but, the guys that were able to get a key bite every day. It was it was really important. Well, for you, it was a solid finish there. I, I believe, if I remember correctly, you made the cut, uh, but you were right there around that 40th place finish, or you might have been yeah. just, just below the cut, one of the two. But that's a solid start. Get your feet under you for the Elite Series. And then we were supposed to go right back to back to Chickamauga and start there, but crazy weather that impacted the St. John's also impacted other fisheries like Chickamauga. So we postponed that and we've postponed that a couple times since because of COVID. But for you, it was probably the best situation to postpone it because you welcomed uh, your first child, your, your newborn baby girl into the world. And now it seems like it just happened the other day, but she's five months old. So what's that been like being able to spend this extra time at home with your wife and your daughter uh, instead of being out on the road, missing a lot of these moments? Yeah, it's been pretty cool. Actually, if you listen, you probably hear her and my, my wife are in the other room and she's kind of fussing a little bit, but it, it couldn't have worked out any better with the Chickamauga event. I mean, Chickamauga is my favorite place to fish. Um, I was really looking forward to that event, especially that time of year. I hadn't fished it much, but I did go pre-fish, so I felt pretty comfortable. Um, but it worked out. You know, we were kind of stressed about the timeline and everything, and obviously, first child, I really wanted to be there. So it was important for me to do so, and, you know, the stars aligned in that that regard but it's been great being able to spend time with her um you know this this lockdown has been tough on a lot of people including you know our family like everyone else but um you know that time spent 
you know, as she's growing up and the last five months has been really cool. You know, I've won pre-fish for a little a few tournaments too, but it's not being gone, you know, a month straight, like I'm, I'm used to. So it's been really cool to see her grow up and, and change. And it, it's been amazing to, uh, to be, be a new dad. So for people who don't know Destin Demarion, I've got to get to know you from the Bassmaster Opens and whatnot. Walk us through that, because you're kind of a journeyman on the Opens. You were one, like, kind of like a Greg DePalma, I like to say. He's from the Northeast as well, but he fished a lot of time on the Opens and put in his work and, and fished different divisions and experimented, tested himself. The Opens is one of the hardest fields in all of bass fishing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the first year I uh, was able to fish as a pro in the, the Northerns, I um, – you know, I came really close to qualifying. It actually had a late penalty at one of the tournaments that ended up being the difference. And, uh, you know, I look back on it now, and honestly, I recognize it a year or two later and how it was kind of a blessing. You know, I wasn't ready in my life, you know, positioned financially and everything to be able to, to make the jump. And uh, everything happens for a reason. And, you know, I had to take some lumps and, and you know, learn some lessons the hard way in between that time. And, uh, you know, it happened at a perfect time last year. And there was a lot of transition going on in the sport. And, and it feels like it's obviously with this season, I mean, it's kind of crazy for everybody. But, you know, there's a lot of opportunities, um, you know, in the Elite Series especially to to really be able to go in and, and do well and, you know, be one of the guys. So I'm thankful for the timing of things. And unfortunately, I don't know, you know, the COVID and the pandemic thing is kind of coincided but that's happened for all of us rookies and i'm just trying to look on the bright side of things and stay positive yeah and for you you've got a different a different aspect with when it comes to sponsors you're getting your footing in the industry and you're getting to know those companies that are endemic as we would call it but non-endemics is what everyone wants to to find those companies that aren't related directly to bass fishing that want to spend some dollars or help out and you have one not to dig up some dirt on you sorry pun intended <laughs> there but you kind of your dura edge your title sponsor is kind of a unique one deals with sporting events uh and, and a whole lot of other things in, under their umbrella tell me about that yeah you know funny enough um i just wrote a blog on Bassmaster. if you want to get a little bit more detail but i'll go kind of go with the short story which is um friend of mine was up fishing we were going fishing up in northwest pa i was living in southwest at this time so we stayed at my mom's house he ran over the neighbor's yard long story short he got yelled at the guy came over later um happened to be the owner of dur edge and we started talking um i sat down with him a couple times told him what i was doing what i wanted to do uh he was you know open to helping out i was still a co-angler at the time i had success you know at the co-angler level and I wanted to make the jump and things really worked out perfectly. I started working there, you know, just bagging product at the plant, just doing like grunt work stuff. I started working at the office, helping with sales and marketing and just progressed in my roles there. And um, now I'm, you know, I, I run the boat and the truck around and I take care of our customers who are major league and minor league groundskeepers, also some colleges too take them fishing, do barbecues, you know, cookouts and stuff for the crews and kind of coincide with, you know, the travel with the, the bass fishing. So it's worked out pretty well. You know, a lot of those guys are outdoorsmen and, you know, I share a, a common, common bond with them. That's awesome. That is a cool, unique story. How, how some of these people uh, find these connections that last, last a lifetime. But for you, for the folks watching, tell them a little bit about that progression from co-angler to boater to Bassmaster Elite Series Pro. Everyone wants to know how to find their place, whether it's the college series, the high school series, jumping into the nation or the opens. How do I make it as a Bassmaster Elite Series Pro? And you've kind of taken all the correct steps to lead you to where you are. Yeah, I don't know if I can answer the last question yet. I'm just going to adjust here for a second. but. Um, as far as getting there, I think I, I kind of tried to find a path that wasn't as clear at the time. Um, you know, nobody in my family fished tournaments. Uh, my grandfather casually got into it, and he's who got it, me into fishing, period. But um, I didn't really know how you did it, and I just did a lot of studying. And I saw, okay, you can fish opens. There's an amateur side. You don't need a boat. So that's how I started getting into it. I got into a college club my senior year. Um, we fished a tournament, did terrible, but it was a great learning experience. Um, started fishing local clubs as a co-angler and then a boater when I got a little tin boat, 14-footer. Ran that for a few years, loved that thing. Still running 
true, I guess. Somebody on Instagram commented and said they, they still had it. They bought it from me years ago. Um, but then I just figured out that uh, the best way to really learn on a, on a broader sca- scale was to fish as a co-angler, you know, in the bigger tournaments. And uh, I really focused on where I needed to improve and where tournaments would ultimately go, you know, when I would make the Elite Series down the road, which I knew was still a ways away. And I tried to really plan around where I wanted to fish. I started fishing up north, and I went down south, and I did a little central. But I fished BFLs. I fished, you know, FLW side. I also fished, like, all three Open Series when there was. And then I was able to make the jump up to pro and started up in my neck of the woods with the Northerns and went down south and uh, finally, you know, was able to finish out when they – switch it to the Easterns, which was kind of a good mix because being down in Florida and guiding and learning how to fish those Southern fisheries is really important to being able to, uh, to make it. So as we approach, we mentioned there's only two elite series events under our belt, plus the classic. I know a classic is something that you're aiming for, for 2021. You'd love to make it to Ray Roberts, uh, but for the elite series, we've got, you know, normally it's scheduled out you've got a couple events in New York and another Northern event and then, you know, we're, and we're done. But now it's kind of going to be the beginning of our restart is up north and then we'll head back down south. So for Destin to Marion, we don't have Cayuga, but St. Lawrence and Champlain should be going off without a chain. Hopefully, you know, knock on wood. You never know these days. A, a, a day is basically a week. A week is basically a month and a month is it's a whole new year in 2020. So uh, for the New York events and St. Clair for Michigan, what do you expect from yourself? Because this is a time that you could really take advantage of your home field advantage of northern fishing. You know, absolutely. I, I was looking forward to the swing, especially because we were having, you know, three and then four, now three again. But, I, you know, I like the lar- smallmouth fisheries. And I like these northern fisheries where largemouth play too, which, you know, Champlain, even St. Clair and Thousand Islands, they, they play a little bit. But I've had a little experience on all those fisheries, a little less so on St. Clair, I would say, um, than the other two. But I I think it's a good opportunity, you know, to make up some ground. Hopefully, I went and pre-fished for all of those. I just got back from St. Clair last week. And, you know, I'm just trying to put in the work to to make sure I've seen everything and kind of have a good grasp of what I want to do in official practice for those tournaments. And, you know, things change, obviously, but... I am excited. It's going to be it's going to be fun, and hopefully we're leaving pretty soon for this uh, Thousand Islands event. For sure. And and then when we go down south. I'll ask you, what's your what lake are you looking forward to the most um, when we head back down south? We'll have Santee Cooper, Chickamauga, Lake Fork, and we'll probably have another one that will make up for Cayuga. Uh, right. Which one are you looking forward to the most? I know you said Chick's your favorite lake, but in October, will it still be your favorite lake? You know, I mean, if you look back in history, I think Chick. Traditionally, like most southern fisheries, is fish pretty tough. But out of those ones, I would say, yeah, that's probably the one I'm looking most forward to. Um, I like grass lakes for sure, and and I think there'll still be plenty of grass there. I like frog fishing. I like doing any kind of grass fishing, chatterbait, frog stuff. So I'd say chick for sure is still still one I'm really looking forward to. And so this week, uh, we normally are kicking off iCast, and we're doing that kind of stuff down in Orlando. This year, it's virtual, but it's kind of that mid-season pause iCast as we all learn about the new uh, equipment that you guys are going to be able to put into play either in the rest of the 2020 season or for 2021. And then we jump off and go to our northern swing. So it's very similar this year except for the virtual part. What are you excited that some of your sponsors are are kind of debuting to the public that you've maybe had your hands on for a little bit or you're excited to get your hands on for the second half of the year? Yeah, you know, um, Abu Garcia, I'd say have the number one thing I'm really looking forward to is is the winch series coming out. I got to play with those a little bit, the classic, um, also the new Veritas PLX. It's like just a pretty high end um, Veritas. You know, it's got the same technology as, you know, the Veracity series with the Power Lux and stuff like that. So it's a lot stronger and, you know, lighter and sensitive. So for, you know, a $9,900 price point, that's that's a pretty good deal for, for that kind of technology. But the winch for sure is my number one thing. Um, you know, we've got all kinds of new rods for, for reaction baits coming out. Uh, I really do enjoy cranking and throwing chatterbait. So we've got some, some pretty good ones that fall into that category. You know, I got to see the different actions and play with them a little bit. So I am excited about a few of those. Um, you know, the Berkeley, the hit sticks, 
Sounds pretty cool. I'm looking forward to that jerk bait. It's kind of got that balsa rolling action to it. So I'm, I haven't got to use that one yet, but I am looking forward to uh, trying that one out in smallmouth country a little bit. Well, Destin, I appreciate you taking a couple minutes to talk to us uh, during this off time. I feel like we've had two different quarantines. We had a quarantine before you fall and we've had a quarantine <laughs> since you fall. But I'm excited that bass fishing is going to be coming back very soon on the Bassmaster Lead Series. How can fans who are getting to know Destin DeMarion in his rookie season follow you on social media? I know you do a lot of vlogs and type things, um, but then also your normal platforms as well. Yeah, I'd say um, the best one's probably Instagram and Twitter. Uh, the handle is destined to fish on both of those. Um, also on Facebook, my page is just destined to marry and fishing, as well as the YouTube is is the same there. But yeah, I've got some cool vlogs and stuff following the season. You know, I show my pre-practice periods and you know through practice and the tournaments and afterwards. So you know, check them out. Um, I'm always putting new content on there and. Hopefully uh, you find something you like. Destin DeMary, one of the young guys on the Elite Series, uh, the ones that are savvy with video. Appreciate you shooting all that content. I enjoy watching it. Even though I get to see the event unfold, I like to see what you guys did to get to where you were um, on Bassmaster Live and whatnot uh, when the tournament starts. So Destin DeMary, appreciate you taking the time, and we look forward to seeing you uh, when the first casts go out at the St. Lawrence River.